The most common question we get asked here at Bikes Online is should I get a Polygon Siskiyou D7 or should I get the T7? Does more travel mean the Siskiyou T is a better bike or are these two different bikes for two different people? So for the next two days, I'm gonna be riding these bikes back to back to let you know which bike's most suited to which kind of trail and which kind of rider. So let's take a quick look at the bikes. Although they might seem similar on paper, there are some key differences here. So let's start with the similarities. Both bikes come with a RockShock Recon fork, Deluxe Select Plus rear shock, a dropper post, wide range Shimano drivetrain, and 29 inch wheels in the size large. But where they differ is in travel and geometry. The Siskiyou D for down country has 120 millimeters of travel and a 67 degree head angle, while the Siskiyou T for trail has 135 millimeters of rear travel and 140 up front, so 15 millimeters longer in the rear, and a slacker 65.5 degree head angle, leading to an overall increase in 30 millimeters of the wheelbase. So how different can they really be? So let's head out to the trail and find out. Coming up here, we got a nice little test, a smoother rock roll, but yeah, that kind of stuff, no problem on this. So I think this is what the Siskiyou D is all about. Nice views, just getting out, exploring nature. So you can do stuff like that, have a bit of a jib, have a bit of fun. Yeah, so kind of picked my way through it a little bit more. There you go, again what the Siskiyou D is all about. But to be honest, this is probably out of the Siskiyou D's depth, but we like it to test our bikes pretty hard. But like all good things, has to come to an end. Gotta go up the climb now, and being a down country bike, it probably should uh, lean a little bit more towards climbing. So we had a descending challenge, so I think it's only fair that we've got a climbing challenge. Easy, barely even slipped. Happy with that, so let's head back to the studio and get my thoughts on the Siskiyou D after day one. So here's my key takeaways after riding the Siskiyou D for the day. So overall, I was really impressed with the bike. I think it's a lot more balanced than it might seem on paper being a down country bike, but I think it probably leans more into that kind of short travel trail bike. Cause I mean, 67 degree head angle, that's what trail bikes used to be like three years ago. So it's not too different. And 120 millimeters of travel is a really good do it all bike. So where the bike really excelled was on those flowy sections and kind of the more smoother rock guns that weren't too janky and those smoother rock rolls. And then kind of just popping off things and going on those flow sections of trail. When it really got gnarly, I think that's kind of when we were hitting the limits of the bike and what it's kind of capable and built for. But I was really surprised I could kind of just pick and choose my line down those more techy things and the bike was able to do it fine. Being a shorter travel bike, it needs to climb as well. And I was really impressed. The bike pedal is a lot lighter than it might seem. And that steep seat angle puts you in a nice efficient position on the bike. But what I did notice on those flow trails, the bike cornered really well. And when I wanted to put in those extra pedal strokes coming out of the corner, the bike was nice and efficient to do that. But I think these trails are probably suited a little bit more to the Siskiyou T. So I'm really excited to take that bike out tomorrow. Look at that. Still a bit overcast, but I've hit this before on the T8, but never a T7, so. Whoa. <laughs> that was janky. <laughs> Be really interesting test to see how these bikes perform back to back on flow, because I think that's kind of where the crossover is between these two bikes. Jib, not quite as much pop as the Siskiyou D, but can still definitely do it. I definitely carried a fair bit more speed down there. Corner's pretty well too. It is a little bit longer, so you need to probably put a little bit more body language into weighing the front end a little bit more, but. Definitely a little bit smoother, that's for sure, but it's always good when you get to the bottom of the descent, especially if you've got a waterfall here, just to take a break, enjoy nature, and while you're enjoying it, don't forget to subscribe for some awesome bike content. But also let us know what kind of comparisons you'd like to see in the future as well. We've done the Siskiyou D line, we've done the T line, and then so it'll be interesting to see which bikes you'd like to see compared as well in the future. And I know Jared's really keen to do some of those as well. But enough of me talking, let's get back into the riding. Alrighty, last descent. Let's see how she goes. Okay, <laughs> going too fast. Uh, up we go, and down. 
Oh, look at this, even better now with the sun. Even extra serenity. All right, we'll do the climbing test now. My GoPro died, so I'll get Andre to shoot me coming up and we'll see how they compare. So the D7 definitely felt a little bit more sprightly, a little bit lighter, definitely got up there a little bit easier, but, but the T7, I noticed, had probably a little bit more traction than the D7 did, so definitely slow and steady making it up, whereas the D7 was definitely a little bit more faster getting up. So I think we're done now, so we'll head back to the bike shed and I'll give you my final thoughts on the bikes. So there we go, that rounds up our test. I'll dig into a little bit more about the Siskiyou T first, and then we'll go into the comparisons between the D and the T a bit later. So as I said yesterday, the trail is probably a little bit more tailored towards the Siskiyou T, and on that first section that's nice, wide open and fast, I definitely noticed that the Siskiyou T was a little bit more composed, and I think that really comes down to that extra travel and that longer wheelbase. The bike's just that little bit more stable, confidence inspiring if you want to be like that. I think with the Siskiyou T, you can just push on those rock guns a little bit more. You'll probably be more inclined to push yourself and go on some A-line because it's just, as I said, a little bit more confidence in surviving, but that phrase really rings true here. And then moving on to the flowy stuff, the Sisku T, you can still have plenty of fun on it. It's not like a big long enduro bike, it's really versatile, but on the smoother sections on the flow trail where you want to put in an extra little bit of pedal strokes and have a bit more fun, the Sisku D was probably a little bit better there. So I think it really depends on those flow trails. Do you want that kind of more composure, as I said, or do you want something a little bit more playful, a little bit more fun? And then coming back up on the climbs, the Siskiyou T, you have that really efficient position like the Siskiyou D, that steeper seat angle. So, so you definitely notice that going up the climb. But the main difference you notice on the Siskiyou D, there is that more efficient pedaling platform. I think that just comes being a shorter travel bike and that steeper head angle. It's just that little bit more eager to get up the climbs. So let's really buckle down and talk about the key differences. So which trails are these bikes designed for? So starting with the Siskiyou D, I think it's gonna be really great on the stuff like fire trails, smoother single track, you got your flow stuff, smoother rock rolls and kind of less technical rock gardens. That's where this bike really shines. So typically that's gonna be your green beginner trails and your blue intermediate trails. So let's talk about the Cisco T now and what trails best suit it. And if you're looking at a trail, pretty much what we rode today is pretty much almost the perfect example, except you could probably chuck in a few drops there, nothing bigger than kind of one and a half, one meter, so kind of like three to five feet, kind of around that and then probably some jumps there as well, so kind of around that three to four meter mark, so say around nine to 12 feet as well. So it's gonna be really great on those flow trails, so similar to the Siskiyou D, great on the flowy stuff, but on the technical stuff, you can start to push it a little bit more. So now we've covered the key differences between the bike that are on the trail and what trails the bikes are suited for, let's talk about which rider each bike's suited for. So I think the Siskiyou D is gonna be great for someone getting on their first dual suspension bike, kind of progress beyond a hardtail and want to start pushing themselves a little bit more, but not necessarily go super crazy. And I think it's going to be great for someone that rides everything from XC to trail and just wants a great value bike with all those modern features. So you're getting the dropper post, air suspension, a decent head angle, 67 degrees, nothing crazy. And the bike's going to be still nice and efficient, so you can do everything. Now onto the Siskiyou T, and I think this bike is really for someone that's willing to take that next step. Whether it's from something like a Siskiyou D, or they progress really quickly on a hardtail and have that aspiration to hit the descents a little bit more. But being a trail bike, it doesn't detract too much from the fun factor on the flatter trails. So it's still pretty efficient, and it's a pretty good climber as well. But I think it's just a do-it-all versatile bike with a slight descending bias. So if that sounds like you, I think the Siskiyou T is gonna be a great option because for me, it's kind of my perfect bike. But in saying that, the Siskiyou D, still a great bike, it's just probably not suited as much for me, but for someone that might be riding the trails that we mentioned that might suit that bike, I think it's gonna be a great option for you. So if you have any questions about the bikes, definitely leave a comment below and hopefully we can find the right Siskiyou for you. Too corny? <laughs> okay, going too fast. Carrying a lot more speed there. <laughs> Up we go and down. Right, Woohoo!